Right, here I am again, being taught more uh, Indian martial arts. Now this time, uh, we've got sticks in our hands, and the first thing that um, has been made clear to me, that I shouldn't do any sort of wind-up that, that lets my opponent know that a blow is coming. So uh, if, if I want to hit him, I could just hit him rather than do a wind-up and hit. And here, you notice, is in this very casual position here, and from there, he can, he can suddenly whip that uh, sword out uh, without the tiniest movement, whereas if he did show me that he was about to hit, I'm already starting to react. Okay, now the next uh, principle is that you try to parry as far up his arm as you can. You don't want to parry the tip of his weapon because uh, that's going really, really fast. You're going to clash really hard. If anything goes wrong, you've missed. Um, and you could damage your own weapon as well as his. Um, and most importantly, yeah. at the last moment, if I'm dexterous, I'll move around yeah. quite comfortably. And that's the thing. The higher, the further away from him I, I block, the, the, the smaller an adjustment he need make to evade and do something different. So if he does do that strike and I try to parry the tip, he hardly has to adjust at all and oh, and now he's got me. Whereas if I go for his hand, he has to do a much bigger reaction. And I could, of course, go for his wrist. So now he has to do an even bigger adjustment. But what if I went for his elbow? Now he has to do a really huge adjustment to evade what I was doing. So the, the further up um, his arm I go, the easier it is for me and the harder it is for him. Um, so if I get to here, I'm able to push on his elbow. I don't need much strength here. He might be, well, I mean, just look, just look at the arms on him. He's probably <laughs> twice as strong as me. He might be a lot stronger than me, but I will be strong enough, if my posture is good, to, to hold his arm in check while I do a, a thing that, that, that uh, inconveniences or, or him. Or even yep. just make me pause for a moment as you step past and hit me. Because you don't really yep. hold me there. You can just stop me for a second while you hit me and continue. Right. Your fight. <laughs> yeah. So, um, now there's an interesting exercise which demonstrated this. Uh, first, um, he will launch an attack and I will try to parry by going for his wrist and then he will make some adjustment Oh, and then counter. So I then go for his wrist again, he adjusts. I go for his wrist again, he adjusts. And now I'm going a little bit faster. Now I'm actually going to try to hit him in the wrist. He's very good at this, okay? <laughs> I'm sometimes good at it. <laughs> and then oh, sorry. <laughs> Eventually, right. But you saw, he's pretty good at this and we weren't moving our feet. He was just evading. Uh, just with a tiny bit of a lean and the movement of the arm. Um, okay, so uh, if I do ever hit him in the wrist, yeah. I can now follow up and I might have something like this, which is called a crot. 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 <laughs> uh, he said it better, crot. I'm not Punjabi. Close enough. <laughs> anyway, okay, so essentially it's a, a bit like a Western buckler. Um, so if I've got this in my hand, I can immediately start punching in there or just punching in there or punching there and creating space for myself to follow up with some other attack. And it would be quite often the case that they would have a dagger, perhaps a, a blade sticking down the bottom or a punch dagger, quite often with the blade sticking that way. And the sword is not actually what finishes the opponent off. The sword, if you like, crosses the bridge, gets me in there, and then it's actually the dagger which stabs into some exposed point. We're always assuming in this martial art that my opponent might be armored. Um, so punching into a weak spot like a throat, or armpit or whatever is, is preferred to trying to finish him off with a cut. Chainmail is really good against a light, whippy, cutty saber. You're not gonna cut through chainmail, so you're unlikely to finish someone off with, with a cut from a sword. Cool. And also the evolution of that game was yep. once you got used to uh, moving out of the way, yep. at that moment when they're going to strike, you start changing your strike to hit their hand or pin their hand or even slightly knock Absolutely. Them. So, yeah, so let's, let's get on to that. So, instead of, of, of uh, what I was expecting, I get whacked in, in this case, the thumb. Yep. And he might also get me in the wrist or the well, knuckles in that case. Always trying to avoid the tip of my blade. And I start putting my hand in. So every time he misses, I mm -hmm. try my best to pin this normally with a dagger or a crop. So I could, yep. so if you go for a normal strike sort of thing, I could do this and yep. this at the same time, if need be. So they tend to start working together. Right. And a lot of this comes from a fighting stance 
uh, that uh, has a, a slight a boxer-like nature in that you're getting, getting down, but it's also got, a, it's got that slight lean and it's got that slight movement as well, which reminds me of capoeira. Yes. Uh, and the footwork, uh, I, I recognize very definitely from HEMA. Um, one of the first things I was ever taught in HEMA is this triangular stepping where you're using it to, to stay just out of reach. So if I take a swipe at my opponent here, he just steps out of reach whilst keeping himself within range of me using this triangular stepping technique, which is straight out of the, the medieval German treatises. Uh, it, I mean, <laughs> seriously, I mean, it was, it was exactly yeah. textbook the same. Um, okay, so there you go, some more uh, Indian Chasta Vidya. Shasta Vidya. Shasta! <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to get that wrong. Shasta Vidya techniques. Thank you. Thank you. Lindy Bear!